You are passionate about information security. You enjoy ethical hacking, and you want to become a professional pentaster. But you don't know where to start? Then this video is definitely for you. You will learn how to work with ZA Proxy, an intercepting proxy tool that scans and analyzes web traffic, as well as identifies various vulnerabilities in web applications. The program's principle of operation is straightforward. It acts as a proxy between your browser and the tested website. ZA Proxy analyzes the passing packets and then conducts a thorough scan of the site. In this video, we will cover the essential basics of the program to get you started. However, let's begin by exploring how to install it. Zap Proxy can be installed on Windows, Linux, and, of course, on Kali. To do this, go to the official website and click on the download button on the home page. There are installers available for various systems, but you will also need to install Java. On Kali, it should be already installed, but if not, you can simply execute one of the two commands. The installation will take a couple of minutes. After installation, let's launch the program and try to understand how it works. Here, we are prompted to save the results of our work in a database in case we want to reapply them, or we can choose not to save anything. Let's go with the second option. The program interface consists of three windows. In the first window, the structure of the tested website is displayed. In the second, you will see information about server requests and responses. In the third one, you will find information such as links, discovered vulnerabilities, and more. Since the program operates as a proxy, you will also need to configure your browser, or you can use the built-in browser provided by the program, which is already appropriately configured. I will demonstrate this a bit later. In the right window, you see two buttons, one for automatic scanning and another for manual exploration. As websites vary, and some of them may use different authentication methods, it's better to start by manually exploring a few pages before initiating a full scan. If the site is relatively straightforward, you can proceed with automatic scanning right away. It's a simple process. Just enter the link and click the attack button. But we won't do this right now. Initially, we will manually explore the site and then proceed to scan it automatically. So, let's choose the manual mode. Here, we don't need to enter the site link, we can directly click on the launch browser button. By the way, we can even choose which browser to open. Pay attention to the heads up display option. It allows duplicating some control functions of the program in the browser. In other words, you can comfortably work in the browser and see and manage the entire process in the same browser without switching between the program and the browser. Let me demonstrate it. In the open browser, enter the address or link. After a while, a new menu appears on the left and right sides. It contains various buttons and indicators, and in the middle, there is a banner suggesting checking the instructions. We'll skip the instructions, we'll learn how to work with this interface as we go. To start, let's open any application and randomly navigate through the links. Pay attention to the indicators on the left and right. The program intercepts links, analyzes them, and issues a message that a particular page may contain errors or vulnerabilities. If you wish, you can click on any indicator to get more information. You'll see possible vulnerabilities. Now let's see what is displayed in the program itself. In the leftmost window, you see the links we visited. If you click on any of them, you will see the site structure based on the pages we have already visited. In the right window, you'll find sent and received requests. Now switch to the alerts tab in the lower window. Here, the vulnerabilities detected by the program are displayed. We already saw them in the browser, but there was only brief information. At this stage, it's still too early to say that the site contains vulnerabilities, as we still need to confirm them. So, we already have some groundwork. Now let's build the complete structure of the site. Perhaps there are hidden links that we are unlikely to find through manual search. We have two options. We can either initiate this function directly from the program or the browser. From the browser, it's easy to do. On the right side of the browser, there's a spider button. 
If you click on it, the automatic exploration process of the current site will begin. In Zap Proxy, it's done a little differently. In the left window, we select the application we want to explore. Then open the context menu, choose the attack option, and then Spider. In the open window, you can modify some scanning settings, but let's leave it as it is and start the scanning. A new Spider tab appears at the bottom, where you can see all the results. Now switch to the Messages tab. Here, a complete link is detailed, indicating the HTTP method used, such as GET, POST, or any other method, for example, PUT or TRACE. It also specifies the server's return status code. If it's 200, the page is working. If 301 or 302, then the redirection to another page was used. On the far right, indicators are displayed, pointing to possible vulnerabilities. Tags can also give insights into the type of content or parameters present on the page, such as comments, JavaScript scripts, various forms for entering passwords, or other types of data, and so on. With these tags, we can roughly determine the type of attack that can be applied to this page. For example, if there are forms on the page, it's likely susceptible to SQL injection. If there are comments, in addition to SQL injection, cross-site scripting attacks are possible. So, we already have the complete structure of the application. Now let's try to scan it for vulnerabilities. During the scanning process, various exploits will be applied to the identified vulnerabilities to confirm or refute their existence. To do this, in the Sites window, select the desired application. Open the context menu, choose the attack option, and then active scan. Here, you can also modify some parameters if you wish, but now let's initiate the scan with default settings. After the scanning is complete, switch back to the Alerts tab. Here, there will be a list of confirmed vulnerabilities. We can review the results and, if necessary, proceed with manual testing. For example, let's open the SQL injection section. Here, we see the identified links, as well as the injected payload, or in other words, the exploit for this type of vulnerability. In the upper window, the sent and received requests are displayed, which you can analyze. And, of course, let's examine the main function of this program, intercepting and manipulating HTTP requests. You can use both, the program itself and the browser for this purpose. Let's look at both options. In the top panel at the center, there is a green circular icon. To activate the request interception, click on it. It will immediately turn red, indicating that the program is ready to intercept. Now, let's switch to the browser and refresh the page. A modal window pops up immediately with the intercepted request, which you can modify. Let's see what we have in the program. And in the program, a new tab named Break has appeared with the same content. After modifying the parameters, you can send the request to the server using one of the buttons in the top panel. Now let's see how to activate interception in the browser. To activate it, on the left side, simply click on the button named Break. After conducting all the tests, you will likely want to obtain a report of the findings. To do this, in the top panel, select the Report menu item. You will have several options for generating the report. Let's try HTML, the first option. The result will look like this.